guy. All right, boot up. We have been talking to Will Wade here the past couple of weeks because we are trying to make basketball season happen faster than November 26th or November 25th when LSU will open up their season versus San Francisco. That's just about eight days away, though, uh, as uh, Coach Wade and the crew over there at LSU Basketball have agreed to the uh, the MTE, the multi-team event that will be held in Lincoln, Nebraska, as uh, LSU will play uh, San Francisco, Western Kentucky, and St. Louis November 25th, 26th, and then 28th, uh, respectively. Tonight, Skyler Mays has uh, worked out for NBA teams. So has Marlon Taylor and Emmett Williams. It seems like Mays could hear his name at some point during the second round. He has uh, gotten ready for the NBA through his days at LSU. And the head coach is Will Wade joining us now here on Off the Bench. Good morning, Coach. How are you? I'm doing great. Good morning, guys. Doing good. Uh, Can you talk about how you've seen Skyler Mays improve and give himself an opportunity to be an NBA player? I don't think there's any question. He's he's an NBA player. He's going to have a good night uh, tonight, and you know he's he's just gotten so much better every year. And that's what I, that's what I told NBA teams. I said sometimes you get these kids that have leveled off a little bit. Like every year, Skyler's gotten better. You tell him what to attack, he attacks it. That's not going to stop when he gets to the to the, to, to your league. He's going to keep getting better. That's just how he is. He's very he sets goals and he attacks the goals and he and he gets it done. Whether it's basketball, academics, whatever it may be. And so, you know, it's not going to stop when he gets to the NBA that he's, he's going to be, um, you know, he, he's going to take take what they, they, they tell him and, and do what he needs to do to play. So I think tonight's the, the start of a, of a long uh, career for him in the, in the NBA. I think he's going to be able to, um, you know, he'll have a good night tonight and he'll be able to stick around and, and, and be, a, be a viable, um, you know, player on, on, uh, on a lot of teams. Uh, over the course of his career, I, I've, I've said this for you know over a year. I think he's going to have a, a, a ten plus year um, NBA career. Yeah, Skylar Mays tonight as the NBA draft is happening seven o'clock on ESPN. It'll be a virtual draft. A lot of people have kept up with Sky and uh, and his getting prepared for tonight. Uh, how about Marlon Taylor and Emmett Williams? How have their pre-draft process gone uh, in just speaking to the, the the people at the next level and from your point of view? You know, Marlon's got Marlon's got. Uh, you know, I've fielded quite a few calls on Marlon. You know, he's an unbelievable athlete. His last game against Georgia, when he was fully healthy and his, his foot was feeling 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 right and everything was everything was feeling better. Um, you know, he obviously had his best game of his career. So, I think he's he's definitely uh, got some interest and and will will get into a get into a camp and and have a way to you know have a chance to work his way back and forth with the G League and, and, and that sort of thing, depending on how the G League stuff goes uh, this year. And Emmett's been working extremely hard. I talked to Emmett actually Monday. Um, he's down in Florida. He's been going back and forth from Miami to Ohio working out, and um, he feels like he's in a, he's in a, uh, he's in a good spot, and I think he'll be able to, um, to find, find a home as well and, uh, and, and, and uh, Scratch and claw, and find a way to uh, find a way to to get paid and, and and keep playing. You uh you agreed earlier this month to Lincoln, Nebraska, to start your season. Uh, you will open with San Francisco on November 25th. Then you will play Western Kentucky and St. Louis. Uh, last time you were here a week ago, you were finalizing uh, those teams in that event. Now that it's done, what do you think about it? This will be a very very tough event. Three very very uh, good teams: San Francisco. You know, we'll be right there behind uh, Gonzaga and, and uh, St. Mary's and right there with BYU and all those guys in the West Coast Conference. They return uh, a lot of good guys. Todd Golden's a good coach. He used to work with Bruce, he worked with Bruce Pearl for a while at Auburn, and, and uh, I've known him for a long time. He's a very, very good coach. And uh, Western Kentucky is picked to win uh, Conference USA. They've got Charles Bassey down low. He's back. they got Josh Anderson from here in um, – uh, here in Baton Rouge, they've got a point guard who set out from Lipscomb, uh, Kenny Cooper, who's a very, very uh, good player. They just got a, a transfer eligible from Davidson, Luke Frampton from West Virginia, uh, who's, a, who's a tremendous, tremendous shooter. Their foreman um, is excellent as well, and Tay Hollingsworth. So they're, they're an experienced, really good team. They're, in my opinion, a, a, a top 25 ball club. And St. Louis is the same thing. They won 23 games last year. Um, he picked first or second in the A-10, them in Richmond. And, um, they're always tough. They're always physical. Hassan French is a great player. Goodwin, the guards, a great player. Uh, Batch, they, they, they've just got a lot of really, really good players, and they return all of their all of their um, their top six guys 
uh, from last year in a 23 win team. And they were the, they were the one team that gave Dayton problems mm. uh, both times. Dayton beat them in overtime at St. Louis on a, on a, on a, on a really, really tough three. And they gave them, they gave them issues both times they played them. So um, it'll be a quad one game. Uh, Western Kentucky will be a quad one or quad two game. And, and I think San Francisco will be a quad, quad two uh, mm. game. So we're going to start off with, with three really, really good, good games. And we, we got to be ready to play and, and we will be ready. I mean, listen to that man talk. Our fearless leader, no stone left unturned, scheduling everything uh, in a very thoughtful hey, manner. Hey, Bob, it's been like the it's been like the uh, it's been like a bear week for Wade. Did you know I was at, I was on Sports on the Bayou last yesterday? Oh wow, down, <laughs> down in Homa, dude. Let's Did go. Did you know that? Okay, I was I there. <laughs> Oh, I love you. I love sports. Do they make you do an awkward dance every time I've gone not, to do it? They okay. did not make me. They did not make me sing or do an awkward dance. I just did an interview. But yeah, I was down. I was I was down there yesterday before I got back for our scrimmage. Good people down there. Saints on the Bayou, a fun show. But yeah, every time I do it, they make me dance, and I feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, in in the YouTube chat, Coach, a lot of people are very excited about the season. A lot of people are asking about the status of Josh Levon, Sharif O'Neal. Uh, do you have any updates that you could offer us there? Well. Yeah, we're supposed to hear today on O'Neal, um, and so we're very hopeful on that. You know, we'll see. We're supposed to hear today, and if not today, Friday. But um, it's been a wild process. But but I think we're going to hear something today, and, and hopefully it'll be positive. Uh, LeBlanc, we're not going to have him till the second semester. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's got to finish. He'll he'll finish out this semester, and when the when the semester turns. Uh, we'll be able to uh, we'll be able to, to to play him, so we won't have him till after the South Florida game. So that's kind of the question about their status. Um, now, 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 why does that status matter? What do those players bring to this team uh, when and if they're allowed to to, to play? Well, Sharif has is, is, is just been playing tremendously. Uh, we had a, we had a, our last scrimmage yesterday, and he rebounded the ball well. He played. He, he can really really help us. Um, been very, very pleased with him. Just his growth, you know, forget he's, he's an unbelievably talented player. You look at his, you know, where he was coming out of high school, but he just hadn't played a lot in two years uh, because of, you know, the surgeries and, and, and different situations and circumstances. He just hasn't played a lot. But, boy, now that he's starting to, to get the feel and in practice and, um, you know, he, he's really he can really, really shoot the ball. You know, I, I would equate him to Aaron Epps. If you remember Aaron Epps, yeah, who sure. we had our first Absolutely. year, he, that, that would be a, a, a good, uh, you know, just an offensive rebounder, shooter, mixes it up. Um, I, I think that's, that, that's, a, that's a good comparison for him. And LeBlanc's, you know, similar to Emmett Williams. He's just a tough, physical, uh, can guard. Um, you know, he brings an edge to us. He can rebound. So he's somebody that, uh, you know, he's somebody that can, can certainly help us. Alex Fudge was the third signee of a very successful recruiting run over the last couple of weeks. Brandon Murray's already in the boat. Jarrell Colbert, who is a, a big guy who will play his senior season in Germantown, Tennessee. And then you add Alex Fudge to the class uh, earlier this week. Uh, Coach, th- th- there's some news out there that the, the tournament, the NCAA tournament, is going to be in a bubble in Indianapolis, maybe. Have you all heard anything about that? Do you have an opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, that's what I, I've just read the same stuff you guys have read. I think that's what's going to have to happen if we're going to have the tournament. I don't, I just don't know how you can fly people all around the country to these different sites and move teams every week. And I just, I don't, I don't see how that's going to be feasible. So I think whether you know whether it's Indianapolis or wherever, I think putting it in one spot and putting it in one location gives us the best opportunity to to, to pull off the NCAA tournament. So I'm for whatever allows us to play and and um, you know. We gotta we gotta play the games and get as many regular season games in as we can, and then position ourselves to get in the tournament. We'll go wherever they tell us to go. We'll be happy to be there. We we'll be ready to win. Uh, my bad, Coach. You see your your recruiting oh, yeah. success: Jarrell Colbert, Brandon Murray, and then you add Alex Fudge to the list later uh, earlier this week. Um, a little bit about those guys and what they bring to the program. Yeah, excited about those guys. You know, Colbert's big, long, athletic. I he he had his first game on Tuesday night against Olive Branch High School on the road. He had. He had five dunks in the second half. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, he had seven dunks and five blocks. Damn. Uh, that does a good job yeah. protecting the does a good job protecting the rim. Good runner, good mover. Um, very very excited about him. Brandon Murray. Now he's going to be the steal in the country. You watch. By the time you remember, I told you guys. This, by the time by the time the spring comes, he's going to be one of the top fifty to seventy five players in the country. Remember, I told you that. Yes, sir. Uh, and so he he's uh, he, he played this weekend. 
Uh, they won again last night. I watched their game last night, but he won again last night. But this weekend in Myrtle Beach, they played they played two really good teams. Um, and he had he was the leading scorer in the first game with 20 points. He had 21 points, second leading scorer in the second game. He's tough. He's physical. He could shoot the shoot the cover off the ball. He shot over 50 percent uh, in uh, at, at Poly in, in, in Maryland and Baltimore. Very very good program. Um, and then Alex Fudge is is uber talented, long, athletic. Um, you know, just he's got he's got some roots here in Louisiana. He's a huge LSU fan. He grew up an LSU fan. His mom may be a bigger his mom and brother may be bigger LSU fans than him. <laughs> I know we're in good shape. First time I called him, the kids like to FaceTime now, so you FaceTime him. I FaceTimed him and his he was in his room and he had an LSU pillowcase on his bed. I said, All right, we got a good, good shot. Crack. Yeah. <laughs> I said we got a good I said we got a good crack at this one. That's I feel good. pretty I said I feel pretty I said I feel pretty good I feel pretty good yeah. about this one. But He's going to be really good. You know, he's he's six eight. He's he's one eighty five. We're going to put some weight on him. Get him get him over two hundred pounds. He wants to be good. And and the main thing is, all three of them men are unbelievable kids, great players, but they're great great people, and uh, that's really important. We have asked you on one on your uh, on your roster on the way out. We've asked you about a couple of guys over the last couple of weeks, including Jalen Cook. We've asked you about Cam Thomas. We've asked you about a couple of your your veterans. How about another guy, a freshman in Mawani Wilkinson out of Las Vegas? I know you love this kid. He was out of Bishop Gorman High School, and you expect pretty big things from the first-year player. Yeah, he's tough. He's physical. He can rebound. Uh, he cuts really well. He's making shots. He's got a really compact, a good shot. He can step out there and make it. And so he's got to continue to get him reps, continue to get him minutes, and uh, he's going to be a good player for us. One other guy now, don't sleep on Eric Gaines. Hmm. He is absolutely electric. Wow. Absolutely electric. And uh, – um, I don't want to, I mean, he had, when the lights come on, he's ready to go. And uh, he, he is, he's electric. And so we've, you know, I don't say this often. I told this to our staff the other day in basketball, if you can hit on three out of five, if you hit on 60% of your recruits, you've done a pretty daggum good job. We hit on all five of our freshmen. I think all five play in the SEC. They're all five good SEC players, including Josh Gray, the big, the big, the big center we signed late. They can all help us and they're all very good players. So, we're excited about them, and and Wani and Gaines and Cook and Gray and, and 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 Cam. So they're they're all very good players. We're all excited about them, and they're all going to be able to help us this year. Gaines physically, you like? I mean, he's ready to go. I know you wanted to put some what, weight on him, huh? I tell you what, I mean, he's you know he's he's about a buck buck fifty five, buck sixty. But when he gets out there now, I mean, you you can't you can't tell you can't tell anything with the weight. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, he's as good as I've seen in the open court with the ball. When he gets in the open court in transition, or I mean, he is he's as good as I've seen. He finished through contact. He's shooting it better. He's getting in and working on his shot. He's shooting it better. I'm telling you now, he's electric. He is a he is a he is a tremendous tremendous player. Let's go, man. Boot up. Love Season it. starts Love in a couple it. of days, November 25th. The Tigers wow. will take on San Francisco in it's Lincoln, here. Nebraska. Then they will be home to take on Louisiana Tech for their home opener. Looking forward to it as the Tigers should be uh, should be problems for a lot of people this season. Uh, Coach Wade here with us on OTB. Thank you, man. Thanks, guys. Boot up. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Boot up. Hour two. We'll close it out next.